for the yeah. most part. Hey, everybody! <laughs> I, you're gonna check out my my Egyptian duds looking real spicy. But welcome to Women of the Stars, and I'm the First Lady Erica, and I introduce down in the corner with his fancy microphone, Mr. Smooth. <laughs> <laughs> I so I'll let you forget the smooth. Um, Jonathan Bailey of the Smith and Bailey team. Hello, everyone. Much love. And then Terry Smith of the Smith and Bailey team. Hello, everyone. And I'm just going to let Terry take the floor. <laughs> so today we are very honored to have our special guest, Mary Wilson. And Mary has been... Uh, such a major part of my life. Um, I met her, well, I met her many years ago, but it's been 26 years that she has been um, that that special person, that special mentor in my life, and I love her so very dearly. Um, I met her, <laughs> um, well, I, I knew her before, but after my daughter died, um, <laughs> she was always talking to me, and she kept saying, you have to meet you have to go and see Mary Wilson. And I thought, finally, I, I picked up the phone and I called Mary and set an appointment. And um, uh, when I got into, uh, when I got in to see Mary, I think she just thought I was coming for a, a reading. And so she asked me like, uh, well, why are you here? And I said, well, my daughter died three weeks ago and she sent me to you. <laughs> and I think it caught Mary by surprise. And she said, okay, I know why. And so that began our journey together. So I would love to introduce you to Mary Wilson, who is the most marvelous person. Mary, tell us about yourself. Oh, your volume's off. Well, it was off. Okay, so because I didn't want to interrupt you. And I've got barking dogs sometimes. So please excuse them. They're like a little family. And I have new windows coming in today, so they're just a little overexcited over the top. So my name is Mary Wilson. Uh, actually, it's Mary Wilson Lennon. Lennon is my grandfather's last name, and I took it to honor the shamanic family of the Irish and also that um, the elders and the old people from the nations gave me a name. And it was, in English, it's, it's our, like grandmother of the four directions. And what that really means is, as they explained it to me, that's it's about my journey in helping people on in all directions on our earth, because the four directions is our earth. It is it is our mother, and it is our place of walking and talking together because we're all children to share that space. So that's that's kind of who I am, uh, and and so I'm a I'm a mom and I'm a grandma and. And I've done, I've been, I've been working, well, it's not, it's, it's not even work, it's a way of life since I was just a kid, you know, like, you can imagine at three years, at three years old, I was burned, and that was my first kind of awakening, uh, because I had to learn how to heal quickly. I came from a very big family, and we, and we were quite poor, and, uh, or so I thought we were quite poor. And uh, so it came from this big family. And so when you when you have an injury like that, it sets, it sets your pace a little different. So my best friends became the animals. The best friends that I, that I ever had was dogs. So I have dogs, I have cats, and I live in a place that is on a river. So I get to see the deer walk by every night and, and uh, the the beavers who dam out back and it's, it's pretty awesome to be here and to connect and it helps me at 10 I had a blood trans I had nine blood transfusions I was the younger person in Canada in Canada in Canadian history actually to have a spinal fusion a bone graft and that was an experiment but and I was really thankful because it worked it took me out of a wheelchair for the rest of my life pretty much I only went back a couple of times for injury for injuries but but in those nine transfusions, it also taught me uh, something else, and that is that we are not separate from one another. Back in the day when I had those nine transfusions, it was blood on blood. It wasn't a, part, a particle or a part of blood. It was the whole deal. 
And so, and if that buzzing is bothering anybody, Terry, just let me know. Okay, good. Um, it's just the saws working in the background. Um, but when when you have blood on blood and it's it's um, and not part of it, it's a whole thing. It's still DNA, and that DNA. If you've ever had anybody in your family has had a blood transfusion or or a bone graft from another person or an organ do donation, however it is, that means that that becomes a part of your line of who you are. We do not walk alone. We are not meant to walk alone. We're meant to walk in unity on a shared planet that we're supposed to be appreciating and taking care of. And, and you know, because the stars are so important, and we know now for sure that there's, and I've known for forever because I've had I've had contact with uh, people from other places and other planets, and so we know that we don't walk alone here. So we have to really work uh, to get out of the ego and into the heart and be open and willing to learn as much as we can and do the best we can to help to not only restore the earth but each other. To lift each other up rather than hold each other back, you know, like really watch our energy, the flow of our energy and, and, and send loving energy and kind energy, you know, rather than um, energy that's going to uh, oppress in any way. So one of my, as a healer, because that is also who I am, as a healer, and as a medicine person, like I'm a, I'm a shaman, these are the marks of a shaman here. I don't know if you can see them, but that's the mark of a shaman. That was given to me as a gift. And this was given to me as a gift in New Zealand. And this is all about the path of my life. And so all of it is accurate and all of it is valid and all of it is important. And it is an expression and a point of conversation. And I really appreciate that piece too. But what's really important to us is that deeper understanding, the spiritual sense that we do not walk alone. Our ancestors aren't just uh, from our ancestral line, that we have guides and helpers and that, that help us every single day. And as, as I said, as a shaman, as a healer, I have had the opportunity to work with people from the other side as well as this side I've worked with. Um, you know, for example, I've worked with three prime ministers. I've worked in in movies. I've worked in the Hollywood scene, and, and uh, so that's the that's the stuff that comes my way sometimes. And uh, I know it's just it's just to prepare me to talk to you. It's just to prepare me to be able to share that love and that joy. And it's to prepare me so I can prepare others and help each other to bring that healing vibration and bring that that um, lightened heart so we can walk at more peace and so we can have unity. So that's pretty much my what I do and who I am and and a little bit about how I got there. I've been, as I said, it's been at least a 50, maybe a 60 year journey uh, of, of learning and growing. Yes, I have uh, Western education, I have doctorates and, and I am educated, but the best education was really from my homeless people that I worked with. They were amazing. And they taught me so much about acceptance and life and, and joy and and brotherhood and sisterhood it's it's been a very interesting life and so those those are the things and in those stories we share with each other and in sharing with each other we become one and we become unified and we find the songs and the music that create that stir inside that lifts the heart that we can share like there's just so much sharing that can be done so that's what i want to do with you so mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's a little bit about what we're doing. So I just want to just go back. When you had uh, the surgeries and stuff, did you have um, any near-death experiences? Yes, I did. I can tell you for sure that when I left my body, 
that I flew up and I was flying to the hospital. And back then, the hospitals, my mother was smoking in a green, it was, it was the most pasty. Gosh, it was the ugliest green you could imagine. They used to think it was soothing. It wasn't soothing. But anyway, she was smoking a cigarette and I'm walking down the hallways and my grandfather who comes from that shamanic family had his hands like this in his face and he was crying. And the doctors were saying another one, like another transfusion. I was watching him do all the surgery on my, on my little broken body. But it didn't matter to me because I was just flying around and, and seeing what was going on. And, and so the message to me when I was coming back is all of a sudden it's like, okay, like this is serious stuff. You're not just flying around. Somebody's here and they're talking to you. So you better pay attention. And they told me things like this. You will be loved by the masses. You will be loved more than most ever any human being could ever experience. You will never suffer more than you will be loved. It was just all about love. And, and then I was told that I was going to be sent back and that there was different, different things in life that would occur, you know, that I would save the life of a child at birth, at birth, that I'd save a baby that was turning blue and that I was needed by, I remember I was 10 years old, so this didn't make any sense to me, that I would be needed by my daughter more than my son, but they both needed me. And that when things got really, really hard, and really hard, that I was to just focus and bring that light through my body, and to make sure that there was a rainbow, like a kaleidoscope of color that would absorb. So as a 10 year old child, that's what I saw. I saw this kaleidoscope of light and in that light and in the center of that kaleidoscope was a white light, was a white light. And I remember being pushed literally physically. I felt that whoosh like that through this kaleidoscope of light. And I was back in my body. And so I ended up being without, you know, like I was on a striker bed for months. I was, I was you know, the one, two, three flip. It was a <laughs> wicked and, and a very, very awful, but beautiful experience. Because I had one woman that really loved me there. I mean, my family loved me. My mother loved me deeply and desperately. But there was a woman there. Her name was Nurse Smith. <laughs> Believe it or not, Terry, it was Nurse Smith. <laughs> I remember her name. I remember what she looked like. I'm sure she's passed by now. But she was the kindest soul. And she just held me like a little bird. Like she could just help me to hold that space. Like as a little tiny sparrow or bird. And so as I got stronger... They gave me a, a pen and paper and and on the striker bed, I'm laying face down and uh, you can't move on these striker beds. It's just like, it was just like a, a gurney really that was made out of cloth, two poles down and, and two screws, one at each end. And they would put you in like a sandwich and then they would go one, two, three, flip to get you on your back or to get you on your stomach. You weren't allowed to move. And I wasn't. So I was laying with the strap across my head like this, you know, and I had my arms free and they worked. And so I colored the picture of Santa Claus in a sleigh over a city with stars. And then I gave it to, well, they entered it in the contest for Children's Hospital. And I became the winner. I became a poster child. A poster child. And so the years later, the mail came in and, you know, it was like if you've ever seen the movie 42nd Street where they bring in a great big bags of mail. I was loved by the masses. I had bag after bag after bag of people just saying things like, keep your chin up. You know, 92 year old bl blind man scrolled across a piece of paper. Keep your chin up. Well, for me, that's profound. Because I'm like that anyway. I, and now that I'm, you know, in my body and I've gone through near-death experience, everything, you're, you're like a, 
a lie why you're like all those colors moving through your body all at once all the time and your vision is different your taste is different and your smell is different everything's different so it's like stepping into a new arena never mind having to step in and deal with the dna which was a beautiful experience it was not a bad experience for me it made me strong Somebody else's blood made me strong. And so when I had that near-death experience and they said it would be loved by the masses, I was. And I did save a baby's life that was blue at birth. And it was my own granddaughter. It was my own granddaughter. And because she was born and, and they weren't moving quick enough and, and I ended up having to help deliver her. And it was a, a beautiful experience. Hard on my daughter, very hard on my daughter. But wow, what a... 28 years later, and I'm still loving this child. So I'm very fortunate. And so, you know, and yeah, there were times where my daughter did need me more than my son, and my son has needed me, but he needed me differently. He needed me to feed his brain and to let him walk outside the box. And so I've done all those things, and and I, I've worked with the homeless, and I've worked with people, and I've been a healer, and I've done healing work for oh forever. And as I get older, it just gets better, let me tell you. So, you know, I go through these waves because of this near-death experience. I've had two of them. The other one was a warning to be careful of my own body. They showed me things like, <laughs> they showed me both sides, the good and the bad of things. And and so I've got the choices. There is there is stuff that isn't all that pretty out there on, the, on some of those dimensions and vortexes. So we have to really watch what we think and how we, we moved, but it was a good teaching on what to stay away from in my life. And so I've stayed away from it and, and which is addiction and oh, just lots of different stuff. But as I said, I know who I am. I know where I'm going. I know that beauty of that kaleidoscope and I know how to see as a medical intuitive. I know how to heal with my a gift that was given to me and in, in the ability to heal in my hands. And I've got my heart, which I think is strong and good. And I've got my mind that is always under construction. <laughs> and my spirit that I think is connected into that that light. Yeah. Now, if, this, if there is any chats, Terry, read them to me, okay? There's in chats, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah I loaded it up because as soon as you started talking, all these questions came rushing through my mind, and Terry can still read them. <laughs> but, but I didn't want to forget them, so I like, I'm like, ah! like, ah, that's great. That's great. Okay, how come I can't? Oh, here we go. That's why I couldn't find it. Oh my gosh. Okay. So are they lots just of questions here? Straight up. Yeah. Okay. So I, okay, I'll start here. So what so what age did you start your your, your healing, Mary? I think, you start, when did you start think, doing healing? You know, other than really thinking I was like somebody like Snow White that was because could communicate to animals, because I am quite strong with communication with animals as well. That was three. So I wow. think that I, yeah, I think it was all my life, really, that it was just different, different things that I was guided into. But when I knew I could heal was when I was 12 years old. I already knew I could heal at 10 when I came back. I had my legs. I, I, I call them have my legs. I could walk again. And I became a little protester and I protested war and, and I played with things that I shouldn't play with. And and, you know, I remember the warning coming. I had the perfect gray T-shirt. And I was dabbling in some really dark stuff because at 12 years old, you got to find out everything. And then I, I called the Ouija board and it said, things are burning, burning in the barrel. And I went, what? In our back house. So my girlfriend's now freaking out. Ah! And so in our backyard, we have a burning barrel. And in that burning barrel is my favorite green, t green gray t-shirt. And it was smoldering. It was burning, burning in that thing. And so again, it's like, where are you going? What you doing? So it was always, I always had these wonderful spirits warn me about where I'm not to go. Because they scared the heck out of me. 
And so at 10 years old, I picked that healing journey and I did my best and that's why it started. So, so for over 50 years now, I've been doing healing work and helping people. I said, I became a little protester, you know, um, did the uh, very involved as a young person with Greenpeace, you know, saving, saving the ocean, saving the whales, getting reinvolved, you know, just, just, you know, um, looking at at an understanding of oneness and you know not necessarily fitting into the status quo i've never really felt like i fit into the academic world although the academic world thinks that i fit in quite nicely they keep on offering me these 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 big positions in academia and i'm okay with that because it's, for me it's about communicating getting that that news out and and uh, also understanding that there is a deeper there's a deeper, there's more, there's more than what meets the eye to all of us. Because we all have the ability, you see, to generate healing. We just don't know what, how to do that. We just don't, nobody's been teaching this stuff. We get taught in little pieces, but nobody really expresses, okay, this is what you do. This is what you do with your body. Because you have to deal with your body before you can deal with somebody else's. And so that's why my brain and my body is always under construction. <laughs> because it's a never ending journey. This is not meant to stay forever. This is a this this body that I'm in is is really just a vessel that my soul is residing in, and it's my soul that keeps on pushing it forward. So I'm good with that. So I think all my life, I think pretty much all my life, yeah. I feel I feel like that 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 is a huge thing because people have a lot of attachment to these identities. Um, I'm black, I'm a doctor, um, you know, like yeah. I'm married, I'm a parent, like the, the identities that, that kind of trap them and don't allow them to be flexible. And then also it's very damaging when you lose that identity, like people who get divorced or if you lose your job, it's like now they feel like they've lost everything. And it's like, no, yeah. you, you've never lost it, right? Absolutely, but that's also a part of the development of the soul because those teachings and those lessons are what makes us stop and say, I better return in here and figure this stuff out because that's not working anymore. And so when we're talking about identity and who's this enough and who's that enough, and you know, it's that lack of, of, of self-acceptance. We're so unkind. We've got so much ego. You know, and we hear this whole ego, 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 ego. Yes, it's all true. And we just really need to understand that we have a superficial self. Because we we're born into this humanness, we, we were given this lovely gift of free will, right? And, and ego. And so, yeah, we got to deal with it differently. We do. We, all, we, we think that we're this huge evolved species. And guess what? We weren't the first ones here. So we have to get over that. You know, we have to we have to break down those barriers that keep us apart rather than keep us together. We need the wall, we need those spiritual walls to pick us up and put us like in that hand that that woman did, like it was a little bird. We're all little birds. We gotta just flock together, you know, we gotta we gotta get it together. Sure. So that's exactly you just said a, a whole big gigantic thing because as we I see people taking on all these labels of what it is that they are and it's supposed to be creating inclusivity right it's supposed to be inclusive but it seems like the more you add the labels you're actually excluding rather than including like you're just you're taking on all these these labels and no, it, it, it doesn't seem to be promoting oneness and unification to me by finding ways to check more boxes to separate your identity again. And, and I think that, that that has happened because um, I think there's a part of the brain that just needed to, to be able to place this stuff inside so we don't blame all the time ourselves and so instead of taking responsibility and accountability for our our togetherness or our apartness 
it gives a place for a person to blame. Oh, it's just, for, it's a, it's nobody. It's not a matter of blaming anything or anyone. We're accountable together, not apart. And so when we have somebody that's road raging and stuff, like that's a hundred feet. Remember that that energy is a hundred feet beyond everybody. And so, you know, I'm affecting my neighbors right now my attitude affects my neighbors it spreads and so we have to really get our our our, uh, our spirits in check here and really get to the path more where it's more mindful and, and and clearer and kinder as i said if we start to be a little bit kinder it should be easier but when we get rid of the blame when we get rid of the blame and the accusations of it is your fault or or my fault or fault and we say it is it just is now let's move beyond the is then we can start doing that now if there's been a lot of violence and stuff then that's that goes into accountability but still without the blame going to a deeper understanding and then becoming more spiritually based about this and and really truthfully so not just not just checking the box as you say and I agree with that, but to to bring it to a place where there is a deeper understanding and there is um, a way of, of figuring this stuff all out so our sense of knowing can grow. Because sometimes people live through a lot of violence and I think of uh, people around the world or or in our north that, that you know, have just suffered so much. And instead of uh, being a part of the suffering, let's be let's become a part of the healing. And to become a part of the healing, we have to step up and become loving human beings. So we have to step up. Always a huge mouthful. <laughs> so this this made me think. Um, the other day I had a session, and I was told that. This form of compensation is considered an apology. So at certain points, we receive the apology for the pain. But right. then when do we begin the part about the forgiveness and the moving on and the letting go? Mm -hmm. You see, forgiveness isn't external. And that's another piece is, is it's not external. Forgiveness isn't for other people or for the others. When we forgive somebody, all we're doing is we're giving ourselves permission to heal. Finally, we're forgiving ourselves for being a part of it, for being alive, for being breathing, for for you know being in the room, or for being black, or for being brown, or for being. We're we're in that place of of a deeper understanding where it is what it is. It just is. And so when we forgive, when we start forgiving, what happens is that it gives our own soul space to heal. And so when other people are not forgiving and they're still like this, mm, mm, where that soul still needs to come out and, and be, you know, we can't, we have, we have to start looking at it a much more profound way of doing things and that is from a place of unity we are all sharing space we're sharing air air is alive we are sharing everything every emotion every feeling every thought so what do we want to feel what do we want to think what do we want to do so you live your life by example if you need to forgive then it's about forgiving yourself first and then others like you got to forgive just to forgive so that movement can happen because without it it can't happen true because if, if you're not used to being compassionate and kind to yourself then you can't give that to other people that's right right and if you're still stuck in that pain because there's just been so much horror that we have to deal with horror, but we don't do it alone. We find brothers and sisters that can support our healing and hold us up while that healing happens. And that's another piece that really has to be looked at is, 
is that we are not alone. And so we keep on trying to do all this stuff alone, like we're alone, we're alone, we're alone. We're not alone. We're not alone. We're not alone in this room. We're not alone in the space. We're not alone in this universe. We're not alone in this dimension. We're not alone. When you are connected to the great spirit, you never are alone again. That's right. You're not alone in that bathroom. You're not alone on his couch. Like you, know, you are surrounded. So you are surrounded. So some of the stuff, unless we get to a place like, and this is why it's so important to not suffer alone. If you do feel like you are alone, tell somebody else. So you know that your voice is heard and that, that it means something because when we voice it, this is your medicine. What comes out of your mouth is your medicine. And so when you say I'm hurting or I'm, I'm this or I'm that, it's a statement and other people can come and help to support you. So you can say, I am love, I am joy, I am centered rather than, oh my gosh, where's the next bottle? You know what I mean? Yeah, so, for sure. So, yeah, there's an energy like this that we have to really, it's like being the, uh, the artist of all time. You become the artist in your own life and you sculpt what you want your life to be. And then you prepare for what life gives you as a lesson and teaching. And so, for, so for example, like that forgiveness, Mm. Here it is. I could give the example of I, I, I really hate going to the veterans hospital mm. because of how I was treated when I was in the military. And uh, so for me to it. heal, I have to actually forgive the military for these individual things that people have done to me that, that I feel caused me injury. Because what happens is I go as soon as I pull up in the parking lot, I already feel shortness of breath pain, spasms, and um, I feel and, and behave differently than I do in any other space. That's right. How old were you when, you when you joined the military? I was 29. Okay, so this is what you do. 29-year-old self, I forgive yourself for making the choice to go into the military. Well, I embrace that choice. So I forgive wow. my 29-year-old self for going into the military. Yeah. You forgive that 29-year-old for doing that. And because, you know what, that 29-year-old did a lot of good. And when she sees the other suffering and remembers how suffering happened, we know it's a system that's in place that creates a problem. It's a system. And so we have to understand that those systems don't fit anymore, that we've outgrown those systems, that we're bigger than those systems that we're bigger than the walls, and we're bigger than the wheelchairs, and we're bigger than the, the body parts that are given, and we're bigger than the depressions, that there is more to life than that. And that you walk through those doors, and it's not because of you anymore. It's because you walk through those doors and somebody can see you glowing and say, she made it, I can do this too. So you become a spiritual person that spreads that energy of, of I am. I am one with everything. I am one with you. I am one with me. I am one with my creation of all life. I am. And that energy just spreads through. It's not even about you anymore. So your anxiety becomes and your fear becomes unrealistic for you at this time because of this teaching that's happening right now that 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 energy that you feel is not yours that that anxiety that you feel you don't own it anymore that's the anxiety of what was that's the anxiety of other people that haven't got it yet and that you are sent into this environment to bring that peace and that love and to bring hope hope to others and so that can bring a lot of anxiety <laughs> you use the perfect word unrealistic because when i got out i knew that i had unrealistic fears mm -hmm. i would stop my car for a paper bag mm -hmm. so i, I was so just when, yeah yeah so when we live in fear we're not in love and you are love and so when yeah. you say 
I'm here to show and be love. And I will take whatever comes at me through those doors. If it's not good, then it's not good. If it's good, then it's good. But I will stand as an example of a spiritual person who is. And that's how I see it. So I'm going to say hi to Edna out there, Winter Odom, Hassan. So those people I see so far watching us on YouTube. And you, you, you also mentioned you say it out of your mouth. And so we have to ask for help. We're not alone. It made me think about the angels and the guides and ancestors mm -hmm. that we could talk to. So I don't exactly. have to say anything else. You already, uh, what do you, what do we do with our asking for help? Like, well, this is how I do it. I center myself and I, I open the door. I open a spiritual door in my heart or wherever it is in my body, in my mind. Depends on where it is or where I'm stuck. And so I open that door and I say, you know, spirit of the land, spirit of the air, spirit of the, the divine, spirit of the dimension, spirit of the alien planets. This is where I'm at. Please send me some, some divine energy and some, some support so I can make sense within my own small frame about what's going on right here, right now. Place in my life, teachers and helpers that may be able to recenter my energy and allow me to do and be who I am in this universe, right? And so I just, I just center and I open that as an opportunity. I open it up. So anybody that has a little word in the back of my head, and it starts to come, you know, that little voice or, or a person across the screen, like you and me right now, maybe there's somebody that really needed to hear some of this stuff. I don't know, but we are placed in life and angels are sent. I call them earth angels because I don't know what else to call them or a dog, or a cat, or a feather that falls from the sky. Or, as I said, just a, a thought, or, or somebody that opens a door, all of a sudden, things are moving. And it can move across the screen, it can move across Zoom, it can move across the book, it can move, because you will open the page, and it will tell you where you're at. You will be able to find that divine energy and everything it's just opening that door of acceptance to hearing and learning and, and seeing and then knowing that there is a truth to that and trust so you know your angels are sent your guides are sent your your people are sent you are and have divine interference and guidance and guide and guide and guide this interference and, and just guidance I call it divine interference. Do you like that? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so when you catch phrase. Yes, yeah, because when we get into those spaces and we all do, I don't care how spiritual we are, we get into those spaces where we need that oof or that mm, we get we we get into it. And so when it comes, it really gives us that push right out of our our ourselves and and then those those guides are right there and it's pretty awesome because we have divine interference in those negative thoughts or in that and things that we have we just need to be open but for those that are not as connected as us and, and get stuck we need to physically uh, be in their presence like you walk through that veteran's door you know it can be suicide prevention we don't know be kind be kind you don't know who you're talking to. You don't know who you're affecting. Your words are your medicine. Be good with your words. They will help others. Is it is it possible you could be damaged by unhealed healers? Like, like there's oh, people. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't even get that one out. Because I, I think about that all the time when I see people that are triggered or jealous or angry. And then it's like, oh, I'm about to go do Reiki. And you're like, whoa. Or they're, you know, they're about to do like some type of session with a person. And I'm thinking, 
uh, is it possible? Oh, so you just answered, but I'll let you speak because this sound like <laughs> you have an opinion. Yeah, you had an yeah. opinion on that. So yeah. yeah, I think that there is a lot of damaged people out there that are doing that healing work. And you know, if you're damaged before you put your hands or you're with another person, you better put your baggage outside the door because you can actually transfer and and uh you know, as I said, energy energy is outside your body quite a bit. And so it's important that if you are a healer and you are not feeling well, you just don't heal that day. You take care of yourself. And sometimes there's healers that do things for the for the wrong reason because it's feeding their ego and not feeding the divine. And there's a difference there. There is. And so you have to trust your gut. And then if you end up with a bad healer or a healer that hasn't done well by you, move on don't go back to them pick somebody new and say this is a part that happened to me and i need to heal this stuff and just get her fixed up some people don't some people don't heal through intuition or divine guidance some people heal and do their work because that's what they were taught but just because you're taught something doesn't mean it's correct for the other body, each person has a divine and a unique uh, system, like a universe inside of a universe. And so you have to be open to, like for myself, when I'm moving, I go, oh no, this this was really blocked here, but I can't just move that out because that's gonna affect this and this and this and this. So I have to take care of that first. And But you see, so it, it becomes being able to be in tune with that person so much that you are really one with them. And so when somebody isn't one, it's not the right time. If you need just a massage, don't open up your psyche and say, I need this and this, you know, like be aware of who you're, who's working on you, you know, be aware, be very aware. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, we're, we're suppressing it all the time, like we, because the person is supposed to be an authority and they're trained and this person, you know, they know better than me. But then you go and you feel you already feel hesitant or feel but that's wonky. Your that's your teaching. That's why you're there. You see? Because it's teaching you, you better listen to your own intuition. Listen to your body. <laughs> Listen to your body, listen to your yeah. intuition. If it doesn't feel right, don't go. But if you do go and you go against what your body's telling you, say, hmm, thank you for the teaching. I <laughs> <laughs> but, but you have gratitude for the opportunity yeah. to learn, right? Because you're learning still. You're still, as I said, you're still learning. We're all just students on this earth. Like we're still learning. Oh my gosh, are we learning? Yeah. Because like I saw the movie like Water for Chocolate and when she felt good and she cooked, everybody was so happy and in love and, and full of joy. And then when she was upset, people were crying and they, they were sick when they ate her food. So yes. even for myself, like if I make jewelry or anything like that, I might not touch stuff for weeks. If I'm not, if I'm not in the headspace to like really be joyous when I'm doing, what, you know, my artwork or something like that. I'm not going to do it. And even if someone orders stuff, I'm like, oh, no, can't do it. You got to wait for me. Sorry. It's so funny. I have a story to tell about that. Um, my, one of my friends that I, I lived with, I had this little old house and, and I had bought this paint and I was really, really excited to paint, but you had to rub it in the walls. You had to rub this paint like this. You had to really massage it into the walls. And I went and had, I had a problem with my ankle. I ended up in a cast. So I'm in my living room in a wheelchair with my foot elevated in the cast. And I've got this person around me that's not used to be loving and kind and gentle. It's just kind of like a bull in a, in a china shop. And, and I went like this, stop. <laughs> you have to put love in my walls. Oh, there's the buzzing. I'm going to shut that door. But you have to put love in my walls. And so you know what? She did, and it ended up just being so magnificent. She had, and it was orange paint of all things, because I was going through my orange face. But it was so beautifully done. Like, you could feel the love coming out of the walls. And, and you know what? She has so many compliments. But if I had just painted it, she'd just not put that love. It would have just been an orange room. But this was just like, la. It was a love life. I'm just going to shut this door.
There, I'm, I'm back already. That was quick. Much better. Thank you very much. And thank you uh, for doing my windows and doors out there. <laughs> oh, they're literally working on it. They're working on it, yeah. So Crunch. someone had a question, did, like, do you do IO ceremonies? Because there's IO, Pekao, yeah. I, I can't say that word, and Rape. I, I kind of wanted to know overall what your feeling was about plant medicine, that type of plant yeah. medicine, and then if yeah. you actually do perform these. I don't perform um, the ayahuasca or the other ceremonies, although I have great respect for the plant medicine. I, I, am, I am not one that does those ceremonies, though, no, because um, for me, the healing work comes from, I'm a different type of healer. Uh, I work with spirit. Boom. I don't need, I don't, <laughs> I respect the plant medicine. I respect all the different ways because it's a different way and a different journey. For each and every one of us, not every one of us does one thing or the other. We're all supposed to be working together. And that plant medicine, if, if that plant talks to you, she is one powerful plant, let me tell you. So we have to be aware of that and respectful of it. So no, I don't do the ceremonies, but I know them and I know people who do them. Great respect for plant medicine. Don't like to see it misused, but I don't like to see the waters misused or the earth misused or... You know what I mean? I see it as a part as a whole. So if you are respectful and kind and good, go for it. You know, I have, uh, yeah. Well, because you said that, is it like oh, the plant? Soul. There's but, a plant that's soul. So okay, so it's actually yeah. like taking on a spirit guide. It's an actual oh, guide. Yeah. Oh, my but goodness. It's alive. Anything that breathes, anything on this earth that breathes has a soul. How's that? Even rocks. Even rocks. Well, he said the rocks will call out, right? Didn't he? Mm -hmm. So I was thinking that when you talked about the voice too, mm -hmm. how literal that is. So this is like taking on an actual spirit guide. And so during that journey, when people are trying to reach, I guess sometimes they might try to reach. They're trying to reach enlightenment. Enlightenment, right? Yeah. I think mm -hmm. I, I was interested in it and I thought about it, but I've avoided it because I didn't want to be altered. Like, mm -hmm. I guess people go through such an extreme change and I kind of want to be in control, not in control, but I, I guess I don't want some unexpected change, I think. Or sometimes you, sometimes that plant just doesn't talk to you. And if that plant doesn't talk to you, then don't talk to it back. Like there's an element of respect that we are really missing out here. Everybody wants to do different ceremonies, but are they, are they personally talking to those plants? Are they really doing the work that needs to be done? And that's why they do the tobacco purges and all the other things that are wicked. And don't think that they're all going to be law they're not sometimes okay they're... well get into the wicked get into the wicked mary because i don't know what you're talking about <laughs> okay, so when we're talking about ceremony they give you what you need and so if what you need is i call it the shakedown of shakedowns doesn't matter what you're using you're going to get the shakedown of shakedowns and in some of those ceremonies, you know, like I know the old ceremonies where they do the tobacco purge before, which they ingest and they, and then they throw up and throw up and you've got it coming out one end and out the other end and you are completely clean because that's how they come with the ayahuasca plant is on the back of that tobacco ceremony because that ceremony cleans you out. You see, and then that medicine, then that, that plant, she will talk to you and remember it is a female plant. Because she grows differently. So you, so my advice to those who want to do ceremony with the plant families, know your plant, be aware and talk to it and make sure that there is divine respect given to the ceremony and those plants. But not everybody needs those things. I was going to say, is it like a body hack? 
or a like a, a way to because what are people looking for a shortcut for their lessons right like i want to learn my well, lessons sure. fast back in our day we did lsd i didn't do it myself but <laughs> you know, there, there was lots of um, hallucinogenic drugs that were used peyote like there's lots all over the world you can't just go one or the other but as i said you have to know your medicine and you have to be able to talk and communicate to that medicine not just do it as an experiment hell that's what it could be <laughs> I've actually heard of people, you know, small groups, but then it, mm -hmm. it looks like some of the stuff online, they're showing you a lot of ceremonies, even if it's just the breathing stuff, that it's packed with this room full of people. And um, I've also talked to people about doing retreats. And I'm, I, I guess I feel like the smaller the group, the better. Not because <laughs> depending on what it is. So I'll let yeah. you tell me what, what you yeah. think, yeah. because... I don't know. I just, I always I, think I, of things running out of you into this, per, like things affecting other people, maybe when, when we're talking about other people dealing with their entities and we're going to mix right. up some but plant this meds is with I, it. Yeah, this is how I look at it. You're there because you need to be there. It doesn't matter whether it's one or a thousand or 10,000. Okay. If you are there, you need to be there. Know, uh, know that you are there to learn and grow and be open to having those lessons come. It can be beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. But, you know, I think that, that that's a very personal choice uh, that people take, uh, whether it's small, big, plant, non-plant. But I know for a fact that when we go through those mass healing journeys, because that's what we do, sometimes we gather and there's mass healing because everybody's aligning to that frequency because they're prepared to accept and give and be in that frequency. So that healing energy just layers up and layers up and layers up and layers up. And so away we go. I'll tell you a story. I went to a university way down in the States as, as I was part of research group. And, and in part of our, part of the culture in, in Canada, um, there's something called a round dance. And what that is, it's a friendship dance. And it is an indigenous friendship dance. And um, I was in a very, very, uh, I it was filled with Caucasian, very little color, a little bit of black, but not very much um, North American Indian or anything else. It was pretty white. It was pretty white. And um, in that friendship dance, I started... <laughs> I started a friendship dance in the university in their gymnasium with thousands of people. And they didn't know what the heck was happening. But when they joined hands, because it's a circle dance, and it goes boom, 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 boom. And it goes around and around. And that's your feet and your heartbeat. And so when people are aligning to that heartbeat and they're going in a circle, the circle was thousands of people. Even even the professor at the university, who is in, the the dean of the prof of the university that I was at, uh, even he joined in. And he had a wheelchair, and so it it becomes a unified healing. It becomes a a joining of energy, of complete oneness and goodness while you're in that moment. And so that's why you can do large large numbers because people are prepared to do what is necessary to be a part of uh, a higher love. And some people choose not to, and that's okay too. As I said, everybody has their flavor. Everybody has their way, and each way is to be respected. So the plant ceremonies and stuff, that's pretty, it's pretty personal. So when you're, when you're, may, when, let's put it like this, it depends on how many people you want to have complete intimacy with. That plant is an intimate plant. When you do plant medicine, like, like it is an intimate setting of you and the plant and your own divine guidance. And if you are prepared for that, great. If you're not, you can still find it. Because if you want to really know yourself, you go inside yourself and you create the medicine you need from your brain. Because we have over 
you know, when you think of even painkillers 200 times stronger than morphine, ready to act in your body on, on call, then it's just a matter of knowing how to access all that medicine and all that understanding and all that divine guidance. It's already there and not external at all. So when you, when you get in touch with that divine essence of being, love, love, it's pretty, pretty nice to be able to share that energy. And so, and then that, that becomes more and more and more and more. And then the world will change because not only does your words mean your future, your medicine, but your actions speak as well. And so when you are open and kind and good and you're embracing energy with love, then you're on the right track. And if somebody's miserable, that can't be your issue and it's not something for you to take on it's for them to figure out and maybe you will irritate them because you're just too filled with joy oh well <laughs> <laughs> you know it is it you don't change that beauty inside because it's making somebody else uncomfortable you got to be in your light be in your light. And sometimes those plants, like we have plants for medicine that, that help us too. So like I know a lot of people microdose different different um, plants and stuff to help them um, heal. And that's, there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong if you need a pharmaceutical medicine to help you heal. There's nothing wrong with taking bridges. We are not perfect. These bodies that we are sent are sent to here to teach us and how to teach us how to connect. So if somebody's gift is in making, I don't know, aspirin, and they make aspirin, and you need aspirin, I think that's a connection. You see, so it, it becomes, the more you think of it and the more you pull it apart, the more divine, and you see that there is a togetherness and that we're never were apart in the first place, no matter what we do. no matter what we do, because we are energy. We're molecules bouncing around like other molecules. I appreciate you saying that because it does become this, uh, this thing where, oh, you messed up because you did this, mm -hmm. or you're wrong because you did this. And it's, it's always this right, wrong, good, mm -hmm. bad, you know, yeah. yeah. And, it, and so now we got to forgive ourselves some more because we done messed up. Like, you know, so we kind of take on this failure, 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 you failed type attitude. So this is the, this is where your, your divine energy comes in as because you say to yourself, I am, I'm a vessel. I'm learning. I'm growing. I'm not going to be perfect. I don't want to be perfect. How boring would I be if I was perfect? I'd be bleh. You know, in our imperfections comes comes the the art to the artist. So, you know, we're not going to be perfect, and some people are going to have to do extra meditations or or have an extra salt bath or or as I said, take um, insulin or or you know, something for depression, like we just have to chill and just say, it's okay. I am. I am. Thank you for this teaching. Thank you for the learning. My body's not perfect. My mind's intact. We're starting to work together. We're getting that jive going. And your healing can be divine in different ways. Healing isn't just one way. It's spiritual, psychological, emotional, physical, like we've got all these beautiful energy fields in our body that we can work on endlessly, but we still have to get up and go. We set the brush it off and say, okay, here we go. And you take your angels and you take your spiritual guides with you. And you all get in the car and you go to work <laughs> or to the store or wherever you got to go. 
But remember that that tree that, that is so beautiful that you notice has been sent to you visually so it can help you to heal because that breathes. You see? It breathes. Thank you very much. You are beautiful. And if I was to say to anybody out there right now that I will say you are beautiful and you're exactly the way you need to be and that I accept you for exactly who you are and I am thrilled that we're doing some journeying together. And that would be a big message that I would send to everybody because that is my truth. That's my truth. My story helps people because it, it's, it's, it's a human story. I have a very human story with a lot of, like I've had a really, my life has not been just golden, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. It's, it's been at times really tough and really wicked. But in those wicked, tough times, I had to pause. It makes me pause. It gives me a spiritual interruption of pause and say, realign, realign. What are you learning? What are you growing? How are you doing? What's the teaching here? Does this belong to you? Or are you just a part of, are you giving a person a place to release because they just can't cope anymore? Okay, what are you going to do with that? Okay, I'm going to burn incense. I'm going to smudge. I'm going to wash my hands. I'm going to let it go in that water. So there's so many different ways that we can help just by our own life, just by being present. There's a presence. You are the present. You know, you are the present. And so by bringing that in, I think what happens is that the energy shifts and changes just, just even a hair, it'll change everything. It changes everything. Yeah. So I'm going to ask a question. I'm yeah. not sure how I'm not sure how I'm going it's going to come out. But so you know we've done we've done ceremony, whether it's different kinds of ceremony, but mm -hmm. a, a lot of people don't necessarily have a community to do ceremony and if they were going to do ceremony uh, to connect just with themselves have you got suggestions what what ceremony is really what is ceremony about and how can we create ceremony for you know within our own space to yeah, yeah. To bring bring something to our uh, that spiritual aspect for us well, I also think that even even platform like we've got today gives us a ceremony. This gives us a, a place to share and join and be and express and be true to ourselves. So this is a ceremony as well. So life is a ceremony. And so I think that what you do is you just you just either reach out locally to where you're at to other people that are like like minded to you. You get involved like through this group here or or on a website my website somebody else's but you start growing and you inch that way and that way you're not alone but your ceremony can also be in tasting your food taking a minute and remembering that your ancestors at one time ate what did they like to eat and just eat for them put a little on a plate put it outside by a tree you know eat for your your relatives I give them the body experience that they needed. Go for a walk, you know, have a have a moment. Let ceremony come to you. The ceremony does come. It does come. And so when somebody says burn a candle or have a smudge or what would you like, or maybe you need to create that ceremony and do that for others. And that's another piece, right? So ceremony is a choice and it's good to do ceremony of some sort every day. It is very structured and helps a lot with the gentleness of the of the voice and soul. <laughs> Is that do you think that when we do ceremony it centers us? Yes. It connects us to that yeah. aspect of our higher selves. Mm -hmm. I it do. It becomes that symbolism, right? Yeah. And when you are with other people, it also gives that 
or even other people online, it gives you permission um, to care about yourself and have that joy, which is fantastic, by the way. Because nobody likes to carry this burden. It's, it can be a burden or it can be a gift, depending on how you carry it. So you take that that heaviness and you turn it into that light being. Many hands makes work light. And so many thoughts, many prayers, clears a path. So you can do anything from anywhere. Yeah. That answer your question? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so you can I, have your own food and your own ceremonies. There's no reason why you can't light a person for your light a candle for the people that have passed, you know, do four four hours and and then you just snuff it out and and enjoy your life. Just carry on. Because that is also a ceremony, is the way that you conduct yourself against a ceremony. Yeah. Jonathan, were you gonna say something? Did I say something or did I say something? I, <laughs> I was just sitting there. It was like, you know, it's like, it's just so bang on the money, inspiring and everything. I was just like, I'd be sitting in the background, just <laughs> right. She's right on point. And, and just the, the chills, the goosebumps, the, the, the harmony that she's just um, displaying. It's so it's beautiful. Um, and yeah, it uh, just allows me to, I'm also like processing a lot of stuff that, you know, that's happening now and in, mm. in my life and stuff too. So it, it's just so uh, uh, refreshing. And actually my, I just bought my ticket too. So for Winnipeg. So it's. Uh, that's nice. I will, I'm really looking forward to spending time when you're here because mm -hmm. it gives me also an opportunity to just have you physically and love you up. You know, just be kind to you and be good mm -hmm. to you and, and eat food together and, and talk together and and share. That will be wonderful. That will mm -hmm. be wonderful. So the more, the merrier. That's what I say. The more, the merrier, really. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's why we're doing these platforms, you know, is because I, I do believe that that uh, the more people that, that experience and that understand this way of life, the more peace we're going to have on the earth. And we're going to see... Finally, see her as a living being rather than just something. Well, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. like, hey. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think that's very important, actually, yes. to recognize that. Allowing people to not be intimidated to tell their story, no matter oh. how how it it looks or comes across, or exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. Because who's to say one story is more important than the others? I don't think so, but one story may connect with the other. Right. And he'll go, wow, right. me right. too. I right. understand where this is going. I, I want, how did you do this? And where did you do that? And what can we do next? And how can we gather? Like we should be gathering internationally this mm -hmm. year in different spots. Mm -hmm. And the more, the merrier. We'll have to figure that part out yes one, i got a question actually yeah um so how do you go about um well how do you go about having or connecting people to be able to balance that twin flame soulmate mm -hmm. energy when it's on its exit and you know mm -hmm. it becomes very can become very toxic and imploding and Mm -hmm. Well, I think, he, first of all, we have to, when we get involved with the relationships that we get involved with, we have to do it differently than what we've done it before. Because you see, you're coming off, you're coming off of the 60s free love. I was there. I got the badge. I understand it. But it doesn't mean it was healthy. Mm -hmm. What is healthy was and is spiritual connection. Are we spiritually connected? Are we psychically, spiritually, like, are we connected? And then how do we think together? Can we think? Can we understand? Can we grow? Can we have conversations about what goes through my lovely little head? And then can we talk about it freely without anger? Or un, you know, can we talk about these different connections? Can we talk about what's going on 
in a free and gentle way, right? And then that expression of self-esteem is supposed to come where you build each other up and as you're wonderful and kind and good and the judgment lifts, right? Because we've already worked through all that other crap. And then we figure out whether we are really loving them. And then we figure out whether or not they control us. And if they control us, then that's got to go, you know, like, or is it the control that we feel? And then, then we decide, like, we really do go through the chakra system backwards, right? We go through it from the top down rather than from the bottom up. We were trained from the 60s to go from the bottom up. You get involved, you have great sex, and you think it's going to be wonderful for the rest of your life. Mm-hmm. but how are you that doesn't make any sense because you just don't know what's going on here right so we've got to flip that and instead of doing i love you come here you know a sensual sexual crazy fantastic relationship for the first two months and by the third month it's fizzled because it hasn't got the heart or that the person hasn't got self-control or they've got too much control, or they are judgy and don't express themselves well, and they really got a completely different page. And so that's why it's backwards. Reverse it, and then you get it right. Here down. It takes about three months to get from here into here. Oh, right. Yeah, you need about three months to get through that chocolate mousse, right? <laughs> it's true, because after chocolate mousse comes the substance, right? Mm-hmm. Everybody wants dessert first. Come on. Of course we do. So it's right. time to wash the dishes. The Hollywood. <laughs> Take out the chance. Exactly. So now we got to reverse that. You see, it's, <laughs> it's, it's sustenance. Is it sustenance for our spirit and soul? Is it a place that we can grow and be happy? And if it's not, move on. Don't waste a lot of time. Be happy. Either it's going to work out or it's not. But if it's not coming from here, mm-hmm. and there's no communication and understanding and, and co-op, cooperation. Yeah. Accountability all in here, right? This is all here. Mm-hmm. If that's not there, it's done. Do, do, do. And yeah. if they're not prepared to work it out, then you know it's done. But if they're prepared right. to work it out, and so if they're prepared to work it out and say, Yeah, I think I can, I think I can do this. Let me let me see if I can be accountable. I will be accountable. I will do A, B, C to show you that I am accountable. Okay, then show me. And then what we can we're talking, right? So it doesn't mean it's all just done. It means that there's work to be done or it's mm-hmm. done. Yeah. Either you do the work or it's done. Mm-hmm. But if it's done, don't don't be angry, don't be hurt. Say, thank you for the lesson. Thank you for the teaching. I really enjoyed that part of you. Mm-hmm. But I, I I love you enough to let you go. I love me enough to walk away. I love me. I love me. Mm-hmm. Right? I love my life. Am I able to journey? Am I able to do the things that I know I need to do? And so either it's workable or it's not. But if it's not, don't waste time. How's that? Yeah. That's 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 perfect. Uh, and that makes so much sense with, I mean, going crowned down because I, we were talking last night. It's just like, compared to where I was years and years and years ago of going from the root, but chaotically going and connecting with girls and women now it's just like if i don't if there's not that that spark that spirit that highlights and you know that that pull Mm -hmm. then i i don't it doesn't feel like you can engage that person even no you know down in nova scotia it's very prominent because it's like it's like okay, that's a beautiful person, and that's a beautiful person, and you get you get to see the collective of collective of the room, kind of think that okay, what are you waiting for, sort of thing, right? So it's just so, and that wasn't me, but it was it was one of my family members that that happened to multiple mm-hmm. times, but also mm-hmm. that's some patterns that we had within our. Oh well, sure, our, we've all got patterns. Yeah, and we all make mistakes, but we just don't want to keep on repeating them. Right, right, because that's right. what we do. Oh, 
Right. Let's do this again. I'm like, oh my gosh, let's not do this again. Have we mm -hmm. not learned? Oh, yeah. but this is this is important. This is spiritual. It's meant to be. By whose standards? Mm -hmm. By your old ways of knowing? Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. so that 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 incredible, beautiful part of us that has to be honest with us. You know, it's sometimes we just don't want to deal with it. That's when our ego gets involved. But, you know, if we're going to be accountable for our spirit and our spiritual journey, then honesty becomes your a foundation. It's a foundation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh -huh. yeah. It's your foundation. It is our foundation. Humility, humility and honesty are huge foundationals. Mm -hmm. And humility meaning that you are not better or worse than any other living entity on this planet. So get that. You know what I mean? That's yeah. how I talk to my I'm very, I'm very brutal with myself, actually. It's like get that. That's how I say it to myself. Like, because I don't, I don't at my age, I know I better get that now rather than carrying on. So, you know? Mm -hmm. So I'm I'm glad you said all this. Yeah. I, I guess I see people too sometimes they wanna they wanna gather up people because this was their past lives love and it's like how many of them do you want to gather because we you know we've been here quite a few times so <laughs> i don't need i don't need to meet all of them because some of those cases we were polygamous and things like that so i don't i don't i don't really see the the i think it's people can't look for what what is here for me now uh -huh. And who am I supposed to be with now? Instead, they want to, like, it's the excitement of connecting with all these. Oh, it's like, I found you. It's, it's the excitement of finding all their past life loves. And it's like, I, I, don't, need, I don't need that. That can, be, that can be really exciting for a period of time. And then, and then you go, what am I really learning? Maybe this is the pattern in the past life that I had with you is that, you know, I don't need to be your lover. Thank you very much. You you get, so, so when you do the work, what happens is you, you, you get that so clearly that you're no longer dabbling and running and, and flouncing through things that you really don't want to do. If that's what you want to do and you're having a good time, then that's part of the past life that you haven't experienced. Maybe you never experienced joy or free love. Who knows? Maybe you never really got to finish what you started. That's possible. But to appreciate that and move on is really important. And so some people do go through and go through and go through. And you go, hmm, okay then. But then they're going to get it. They're going to wait. It, it's got to happen. It's going to happen. You know, it's just hard because it makes it harder for them. Long, 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 right? I think to right now things are think things are so trendy and like you were saying with the free love it's whatever the thought forms are like we were talking last night there's these the thought forms to say this is what's important right now and it's not necessarily what's this important is what, yeah this is what I would say to that is that what you would say to your alien sister right so when you're going through these things, would you would you say that if a, if your alien sister was sitting right beside you, would that be important still? So if somebody beamed in and crossed dimensions and sat with you for you had ten minutes of their time. Is that what you would speak about? Is how many lovers you had in your life, or what you're going through? What would you speak to that alien life about? Think well, about that. even 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 deeper, it's like well, yeah. Sometimes there's the feminist thing going on where I gotta prove I'm a woman, and it's like I don't shave or I shave or, or I can be nude or not nude, and it's like all these things to to prove that you're a woman, and and then we gotta teach the divine masculine. It's like this rough thing that we're we're doing where. Where all of a sudden this is the most important thing and it's just like some type of thought form that goes through and everybody you know like spiritual people can catch on to it and hold on to it and think that we need to start a movement doing all this stuff it's like 
is any of this stuff necessary? Some of it is. Step back to, to say, well, how do I know this, this is necessary? I think things are necessary because that's where a person is at and it needs to be necessary for them. But if you're really looking to have like divine guidance and, and be able to jump ahead, then you have to understand and and uh, go to what is needed rather than this, you know, what is needed. Is it needed? Is that where we're going? What is needed? Are you are you in a place of need or are you in a place of of um, search or are you in a place of past? So, you know, where do you want to go? You know, your past, you can't change. You got to let it go. You have no choice. It's gone. Done. There's nothing left. Nothing. So you can bring all that was and all that goodness into present. And that would be good for you to be able to absorb that. And then for your future, be able to, to look at what is divine guidance. And, and a lot of the movements that we see, like even different languages, I think of here, now we've got a new word that we're using, woke. Are you woke? <laughs> right? <laughs> you know, and 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 we have we have different like there's always a new word. There's always a, a new flavor, a new word, a new season, uh, a new color. You know, all this new, new, new. But I also think that there's a need to appreciate what is, rather than always always go away from ourselves and say I am this right now or I'm that right now. I think it you were always that way. And That's it. We once people once people learn what that new word is, it's like, oh, we gotta use it, use it, use it. Whatever the new word is, it's like the most trendy thing with our new names of new diseases. We gotta because that's the most exciting thing now is just to yeah. have this Those label to claim Those this label. thing to yeah that goes to your labels. That's what you were talking about earlier was labels. And are they necessary? So no, I don't think they're that necessary. I think they're a point of understanding because I don't think people get it. But once you get it, those labels become useless after a while. That's like an app, right? <laughs> those labels are like an app on a phone. You only use it for a while and you go, I don't need that app, right? So you learn what you do and you learn what you don't. You let go of it quickly and you hang on to what's good. And we try to keep it pretty simple, right? Yes. Uh -huh. yes. But so, the, it's at the fast pace. But I really think that we should be looking at different things, like the spiritual pieces of ourselves and connecting it more to space. I do think so, because it is uh, becoming a worldwide, it's going to be a worldwide experience that we will all share before long. We're seeing things happen on the planet, the mud, the water. You know, we're seeing things shake and shift already. There's already odd things in the sky. People aren't able to understand them. Well, guess what, people? Things that have always been there, we just didn't see them. And if we did see them, we covered it up. So we have to go much further than what we've gone. Does that make sense to you? Because we've got to move out of the, the systems that have kept us stifled, you know? Those yeah, labels. because they've been oppressive, right? They, they've kept Absolutely. us, they've kept us within a, a matrix or a belief system, right? That's and right. it's like, as we break the walls, right? Then we realize that, wait a minute, there's more outside there's of this of box. That's right. That's right. And, and so that's one of the reasons it's so important to um, understand where you're at now and, and appreciate what you've got around you because it's teaching you, it's your constant. But also to understand that that's what it is and get the heck moving on your spiritual self and, and realize that there's more to the, what meets the eye and, and to start expressing that and become a collective energy rather than sporadic pieces, we become a big puzzle that we're putting together rather than pulling it apart, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very big, it's very big. The, the future that's coming is so exciting and so incredible. Like we just don't get it yet because we're just not in it. But as a seer, because I, I, I'm a seer, I, I be, it's part of my gift is I'm able to see I'm a, 
uh, prophet. So I, I see prophetic things. So as a future, I know for sure that it's going to be really quite, if we do this the right, right, and that means with the good words and good medicine out of your mouth and a good life, there is going to be a very, very, very beautiful experience on the cusp for us. Because as it comes through those two moons, I tell you, it's going to be something. But we've got to be open and ready to accept. We're so busy not accepting different, as you said earlier, races and this and that and labels. You know, that's not, all that stuff's really not going to matter very, very soon. It's going to be, we're going to group together in humanity because we are, a species that is um, very much fragile, very fragile. So it'll it'll be it'll be good if if we walk this world in a good way. Then the good world will, you know, then the the positivity will take us, uh, and you will be aligned with with life and and with your spiritual teachers that you're going to need to have a good life. And so there's that element of trust in there as well, right? Erica, does that make sense to you? Hmm? That makes sense to you, Erica? Yeah, especially the very last part. Just yeah. just try to focus on having a good life. Yeah, we can't yeah. become attached to all the negative things we see yes. around yes. us. Yes. Uh, certainly what helps me to really back up is I get overwhelmed looking at all the things and I'm like, okay, wait a minute. You can't look at all of it because you can't fix any of it. So <laughs> come on, <laughs> come on back. <laughs> you know, exactly. the state of things. But you see, this is this is the beautiful part. Yeah. When you live in an enlightened way. The creativity that is is like the create creative energy that grows. It brings in different people from all over the world. The scientists, the environmentalists, the accountants, the whatever it is that's necessary to make movement happen, because there's such a positive energy, they get involved. So if we don't have the answers, guess what? Your sister, your brother right next door to you will will, but they it's in the connection that we get it because if we don't share where we're at and with goodness and ask and you know when you're in a good state of mind but even if you're in a bad state of mind that spiritual sense that okay i need to get this and i need to be free of this this is what's really on my mind you turn it over you hand it over creator divine Divineness creates an energy, a pathway, and a river that will take you or your energy or your situation to exactly where it needs to be to be resolved. That puts in the people and the places, the guides, the spirits, and everything. But it happens because of your intention. It happens from a place of intention. It happens from, this is how I need to live. This is what I need to live. How do I get there? I open my mind, I open my mouth, I open my life, I open my love. And then all of a sudden, everything's lining up just the way it's meant to. And you don't have, then all of a sudden that somebody is there, you know, you need love in your life. Well, and what kind of love? Be specific. <laughs> Be specific with what you ask for. I have a story about that. One time I was sitting with one of the elders here and I said, you know, I was really, really struggling at the time. I was a single mom and life was being hard. And my car broke down. It wasn't fixable. I said, you know, Don, I said, that was his name. I said, Don, I really, I really need a car. I really need transportation. He said, okay, then come with me. We'll do some prayers. So away we went into this other room and he's singing and chanting because that's his way. And he said, ask, I said, I need transportation. And that was my ask. The next day, guess what I got? A horse. Oh, wow. <laughs> Wasn't that specific is, enough. Exactly. So if we're, but I kept that horse. In the beginning. <laughs> you remember that, Sherry? I'm sure you remember that. 
but that horse was a good teacher and you know that horse wasn't for me that horse was about my granddaughter who was a horse person from the time they were born she galloped before she walked and it gave me the opportunity to expose her to horses see so it wasn't about me it, the transportation yes there was a car that yes i ended up with a car because i did and it was placed in my life but the message was be specific with what you ask don't be afraid to ask and it's right there right there right right there so somebody will help but you have to speak it you have to feel it you have to be open to it and got to be clear you got to be clear and then it all comes together and if it comes in a way that's kind of skewed or different than what you expected guess what because it's not about you and it's not about me it's about a bigger picture and so it just takes us to where we want to go and it's just fantastic like when those things unfold the stories are fun they're, they're you know and it's part of life it's all part of life it's good life is our experience this is like playground big playground right and some of it, yeah and some of it yeah some of it's rocky but okay so is rocky you're on the rocks we're gonna get off the rocks just keep your focus you'll get off the rocks get off the rocks and we need to help one another and that is for sure that is for sure that collective energy of good has to continue we have to speak out because there's somebody right next door to us that is either going to need help that we can help them with or that they will say hey you know like this is like i have this thing for whales for example i have whales whales well i draw them i paint them i i, I the humpback whales in particular because I believe that they have the messages of, of the entire universe all inside of themselves. And so they fascinate me. Every little line and wrinkle on them. Just, ugh, just, I just, oh, I just want to be with them. And so I put that out to the universe and I will be there. Um, I will make sure that we see whales. Like it'll come to me. I trust that because that knowledge, it will come and I'll be sent. And so somebody will say this or that, or, you know, it, it all works together. It's a, it's a great big matrix with all those pieces looking for the right place to fall. And the minute that you've got that positive energy and that kaleidoscope, all of a sudden that little piece of us go, and it's in there. Perfect. And we will be placed to where we need to go. We have the angels. We have the guidance. It's it's incredible how things happen, like beyond incredible. I can speak to so many miracles in my life because of the things that have happened. Like, whew, huge. Are you actively taking clients or anything? Um, oh, yeah. What do you do? Like, how do people? Yeah, I take a lot of, I see a lot of people. I, I have a website, it's uh, marywilson.ca. Um, but yeah, I see people who are going to be doing workshops all over the world. So, you know, people that are really interested in doing that work, they also do have to connect with one of us that are here and we will make sure that that happens. We are a collective of powerful earth angels, like big, big, really <laughs> big. <laughs> <laughs> and we just got mm, grab a hold of it and you know hang on trust see the colors smell when everything else fails get down to your basics taste it smell it listen see just do the things that are basic feel it feel textures with your hands to see what's good in that like sometimes you got to get really basic so get basic so you can get big you can't go out if you don't go in. Go in. Go in and then come out and share. Mm -hmm. Terry. So, yeah. I asked Terry some questions. <laughs> what do you I'm just going to run the we'll bathroom. Talk about it. We'll talk about all those animals and stuff at another time. It's not a problem. We'll 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 talk about how we face our fears through the movement of a rabbit. You know, like 
Ooh. Wow. See, that yeah. already sounds exciting. I like the animals. Yeah, we'll do that. So, okay, so let's take a, we'll take a quick peek for you, okay, for a reading. And so what Be this is showing here is that there's going to be a new business venture that's going to be brand new, brand new. But boy, is it going to go places. Up ahead, it shows a lot of, of uh, actually comes in diamonds. And this morning I was I was thinking about what diamonds are because people put such a huge value on a diamond. Are they really expensive? And so what this is showing is so if this is a, a sign of of um where you're going, it's it's the center is in a diamond and the matrix is beautiful and and that that it will turn out really, really well. So there's a lot of new business coming. But it is brand new, brand spanking new. It's good. And it's also showing here that you have to be aware of health. So it's good. It's a good sign because this is a sign of, of healing and health. So health is in your favor right now. It's a time of convalescence. So this is a time of mending for you. And so that time becomes, even though it's your obstacle, it's also your freedom. So, you know, the best you can do is heal as fast as you can and the move up ahead there's a move and it shows that you're going to get out of a trap situation so everything is going to be <laughs> clearing up for you the path will get uh this is in the size of a pyramid actually you've got the four pillars of a pyramid <laughs> and it's right here and it's showing a moat around the pyramid so i know that you're going to someplace sacred and then that movement is, is clearing, but you've got to take that door. This is really where you find out a lot of information that that movement is good. And it's clear as a bell. And psychically, you're going to be very strong. Lots of, lots of guides, lots of learning, like tons of it. But your sexuality, my love, boy, you're a fireball. You just love to love. <laughs> I do. <laughs> And you know what? I don't see anything wrong with it. It's just saying you've got the tiger by the tail right now. I know you are in control, but sometimes you got to be careful with control because I don't want you to, to get stuck because sometimes when you control, you end up being controlled. And so that's the warning for you is not to be controlled by situations just because you're having great time. Okay. Don't feel that. Because uh, other people may see that differently than what you experience it, right? And so you have to be very aware and very clear with yourself so you can get out as fast as you get in if you need. Okay. Does that make, yeah, that makes sense to you. Now here it shows hope, faith, and dreams all within your reach. So, you know, like when you've got a trilogy like this, I, I, it's a green light from what I can see. But you do have a little bit of false love as well as lasting love. So, I think that you're a person that's going to be in love a lot. And then somebody is going to come in and rock your world and be calm and be solid and be good and not impede your growth. We'll just stand with you and encourage the heck out of you. I see it being very solid up ahead. Okay. But you do have a little bit of fun and you have some false love as well. So be aware of both. Okay. So that's open. Overindulgence is a problem for somebody around you. So what this will be is an addiction issue. So it's not going to be yours. From what I can see, it's not going to be yours. But it might be somebody around you. So if you see a lot of addiction, just walk the other way. Because you don't need to be dealing with that spirit, okay? And then be open because your travels will change again. You will move again after that. So you're going to do some stuff, some learning, some growing, some work. Things will take off and then there's another move like that. And so it shows that that, that change will come nicely and that what seems to be uh, harsh will be not harsh at all. It's a sign of protection and that, that your false love around you will fall away. It'll be all because of love. So if it's falling down, it's going to fall down because somebody's in love and the other person can't reciprocate. Okay, so be careful with that your business end of it though is a green light and your love life will unfold as it needs to but be careful not to be controlled by anybody i don't want to have control okay all right but it also shows like falling we're all three falling over laughing yeah. 
But you know, also make sure that you have alternative places to live in case you just don't like it. All of a sudden you say, mm. I gotta take a break and you need to step away for a month or two, that you've got that place that you can step away for a month or two, away from where you are, maybe even out of the country, away from where you would be, okay? Shoot. Make sure you've got a home base that you can return to if you need for comfort. It's not about the future, it's for comfort. It's because you're gonna put your feet in this pond and then you're like this, and you're gonna like this, and you're gonna, you're gonna be all over the place. So you just gotta give it time and, and trust in that process, I guess. That's what I'm saying. Sounds magnificent. Mm -hmm. It's really good. The change is gonna be wonderful. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Give her a shot. I would. I would. I'm going. I'm going yes. for it. Are you? Where are you going? And what are you going to do? Going to Egypt. <laughs> and and for ha have you made a plan on for how long? The first time for a month. Then I'm going back again in December. And then I'm supposed to move the following year. And you're just moving the energy, eh? So I think how you're going to do it is through work. That that and that energy will move through work. I'm going to be so, doing tours. Yeah, that'll be good. That'll and be healing good. and healing work online and, and tours and mm -hmm. loving that's up good. on people. Yeah, and that's bringing good. Jonathan and Terry and you like come with me. Oh yeah, oh yeah, in a heartbeat, in a heartbeat. We'll make that. We'll do a great. We could do a great um, healing uh, one in Egypt. There's no reason why not. We'll go for it. Yes. Yeah. Mm hmm. We'll get we'll get a whole bunch of people, like a lot of people, mm. and they'll learn from us and grow from us. And financially, we'll be okay, so we can do this work and share share what we've got. Because that's the other piece that people forget is that we have to have money to exist and live, and live well. And there's no reason why we can't. Mm. So learning how to accept is that's another part of acceptance. That's that physical plane reality, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Your purse. Oh, you're off. You're I was just listening yesterday and someone said, like, like if my, my healer is broke, busted, and disgusted, how are they supposed to bring good energy to me and heal me when they sit in here like, oh, my bills, like <laughs> I can't get I can't go anywhere to get my herbs because my car broke down. <laughs> How are you supposed to go do the healings if you if you're all you know stressed out and overwhelmed or being crushed, you know? Exactly, exactly. So that's one of the reasons that it's important that we have that part of our physicality, our financial pieces solid and accepting money for what we do. Because that gives us the ability to hire somebody to go if we can't. You know what I mean? It gives you that financial freedom to to do what you need to do. So we can't be afraid to accept money. And that's been a real hang up for most people is they just give their work for free. Because they because uh, you do anyway and you will anyway. But to accept money is, is something that's really going to be important to you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that way you've got the freedom to do whatever you need to yeah. do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And don't be a wimp. You have to ask for what you want. Like you said, use your voice. So you got to use, use your, your voice to get that money. Yeah. Too. And work <laughs> damn hard. And if, it, and if it's not coming one way, you work hard and make it come another way. You know, yeah. like just sometimes, they, sometimes it's about get off your butt and get going. Get moving. Yeah. Now I'm moving. Oh, there, there's prosperity, right? I'm glad you're saying this because I think sometimes certain... Certain things I'll be working on where the money could just avalanche through. Yeah. And, and the money is sitting there. It's not going to come until I go do work because what, because if I got that money, I wouldn't do this other work that I have to do. And I feel like it's like, no, no, you're not coming. <laughs> no, you know, just go do the other stuff that you're supposed to do because then I'd kind of like lounge and be like, I'm good, you know? So it kind of like motivates you to get off your butt and do these other things, you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. Anyway, my loves, I've got to run. I've got to run now. Okay. Wonderful. Okay. So let's see you this weekend, Jonathan. We'll see you. And Carrie, I'll see you soon. You get your meeting. Call me. 
And let's do another, we'll do another round. We'll do that would be so lovely. Yeah, I knew the first day I met you, I was like, oh, I love this woman. Mm-hmm. So, oh, we're going to have fun. <laughs> but you, but you, you know, know I love you. Yeah. And that, you know what? That's also raising that vibration is fun. Fun. You can't yeah. be spirit if you don't have fun. Right. Yeah. You exactly. So you have to have that fun. So, mm-hmm. yes, joy, joy, joy. Yes. All right. Well, All right. Thank you, Mary. Thank, thank, you, thank, thank you so much thank for you. sharing this time with us. Thank you oh, for my reading. Oh, my pleasure. My pleasure. It was short, but to the point. It we'll is. See you soon. See you. Yeah, see you soon. Okay. Take yeah. care. Bye. 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 I'm like Super Mario when he hits the box. Go bing, 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 bing. Y'all know that's my favorite (laughs) example. Like Mario, all the coins coming out. All the coins, all the coins. All right. Did you want to say anything about your, you know, your guest? Um, Well, I just appreciate all of that she shared with us. She is such a a wealth of knowledge and um, humility and love and because I know her so well personally, she just exudes love and and compassion and um, we were so fortunate to have her uh, have her here today. So if anybody listening has any questions, comments, please, push the like button and and put your comments in because we uh, will really appreciate it and and we'll be happy to have her come back and and talk more about some of the, her teachings that she can share mm-hmm. oh she'll be back <laughs> I mean, yeah i know as soon as she said whales i was like oh no that's another two hours we can talk yep. about whales yep. that's <laughs> easy two hours <laughs> So yeah, I I love it. I would love to talk more about animal totems and um, spirit animals. Um, and that was one of the first questions I wrote in the chat. Was yes, I know, and it just it didn't. That's not the way it went. But I know that no, when it went she perfectly. talks about the spirit animals, those are all teachings. You know, like she has all those teachings that I know she'd love to share with us. Yeah, and Jonathan, you get to get your reading when you go down there, so you get to see her. Oh, it's it's going to be it's going to be quite an an epic in depth too. <laughs> experience. Yeah. Um, actually, to it's a long time coming because the, it was just like I guess it was how long now, Terry? Two years, three years? Yeah, it was about two years ago. Yeah. That that I that I was uh, I just had that knowing that, and there's been multiple, multiple also yeah. um, readings and highlights of uh, connecting with a female um assistant that's going to us uh, going to connect also with you know you know terry and i what we do right in our in this journey it's kind of like it's really you know um popping off now now and um excuse me and uh it's you know i'm excited patient feeling 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 just feeling what i what needs to be and where it has to be moved and to take these steps and so my flight might be turning into a car drive so it's going to be interesting oh. <laughs> with all that snow um we don't have that much snow now we have probably uh i don't know probably like a foot less and it's been sunny for like three four days in a row so that's that's also rare but yeah that'll be an adventure i don't but mind it's march driving. Yeah, and March tonight. can come in and out. <laughs> exactly. Never so, know what those Colorado lows are going to do. So you yeah. just need an extra, an extra blanket in the car. Yeah, extra blanket and some extra car. food and some extra Wim Hof. Food. I learned that in Germany because they can have a car accident in Germany. You might not get off that road for six hours. You know why? They do the whole investigation and they don't let any traffic move until they finish the investigation and the pictures and the whatever, you know. So you will see everybody stop their car, bust out picnic baskets and start walking and talking in between cars. And I just remember one time I thought I was going to starve to death. (laughs) (laughs) I'm like this one little black girl and all these German people. And I don't think at the time I would even ask for help. I don't know. Like, and what do you forget, do? Like, don't forget your porta potty. 
I was thinking about that toilet paper in the woods. I I wanted to watch, uh, make a whole zombie movie. I did not remember. I forgot this is still recorded, but <laughs> I was gonna make a whole zombie movie about just getting stuck in a traffic jam. They call it the style S T A U. I was gonna it was gonna be called Remember the Style or or Beware of the Style. And then there's not like some military people on a truck. You know, there's a traffic jam and the zombies are coming out and I don't know, they're all stuck on side of the road. So what are they gonna do? Just get eaten by zombies. It was it was pretty funny, but <laughs> yeah. It, I completely lost all space and time. <laughs> Where we were just now. Okay. Um well this is great. Uh, remember to like, share, and subscribe and Terry and Jonathan. Terry does the Kashik Records. Jonathan does this amazing uh, sound healing techniques. And I just had a chance to hear about all 15 <laughs> instruments that he uses. So it really sounds, sounds like you're going to have a kazoo. And well, <laughs> no, it, it sounds pretty amazing. And then there's your axiotonal alignments. And so that that's awesome. So if you want to learn anything about that, just check out the um the description section below for myself. I do beautiful um theta healing and I make creative jewelry designs with energetic healing as well. And as I said, pretty soon I'll be doing tours to Egypt. So if it's something that you're thinking about, uh send me a message and I can send you some more information. I'm definitely looking for two people to go with me in June and they're going to get like the best price of a lifetime because this is my uh, my opportunity to do my beta testing group. So if two people are really excited and want to go to Egypt, that would be a really cool opportunity for you to get there for like the best price ever. And so contact me and I'll tell you the information. Mm -hmm. Anything else? All also, right. JB Light Art. JB Light Art. I'm yeah. coming. Yeah. All right. Check the links below. Bye. Bye.